the topic that I'm happy here to, that I'm able to present you the highlights of our work with the title Static Analysis of Variability in System Software. Um, that topic that I'm talking today is uh, configuration complexity. The issue is that in Linux, we observe that over the last decade, Linux has become incredibly configurable. This configurability has come as a cost, namely complexity, so that also the complexity of modern Linux kernels has increased considerably. And complexity, as you can easily imagine, is also a humongous source of bugs in the code. And to give you an idea about the scope of the problem that we're facing here, in Linux 3.2, we're talking about 11,800 configuration options that the user can enable or disable in the configuration um, uh, tool uh, kconfig. This configuration options control, um, um, gets, the compilation of this feature code gets controlled by about 1,700 build system files, mostly make files, that control the compilation of about uh, thir um, 31,000 source code files, in which we find no less than 89,000 ifdef blocks. So while these numbers sound pre, uh, uh, pretty impressive by themselves, I'd like to illustrate you why this is actually a problem. The, the issue is that all these if diff blocks inevitably lead to alternatives in the code. And the compiler, if you have such an if diff block where as a program you want to say, okay, if I have the case that I um, have some code that is specific if the user has selected a non-unified memory architecture, then um, please compile block one and otherwise compile block two then the compiler will inevitably uh, choose exactly one of these two alternatives. You may now ask, well, but there are not, th not that many else blocks in Linux. Well, the case is also if you don't have an else block, then you still have a choice. Either you select the block one or you don't select the block one, which can be an issue, for instance, if this if diff block is in a structure where you have attributes only defined if you select some um, uh, SMP or, or, or not. This is very common in the, in the um, uh, Linux uh, schedule in the task structure. A Linux developer is, however, expected to test and compile both branches all the time when he's developing this code. This is challenging because uh, not at least because the developer also needs to identify which are the configuration options that are actually relevant for the code that he is currently looking at. These uh, configuration options can also be influenced by other configuration options and source, uh, and such as when you're using nested if devs, or they can also the presence or um, uh, can also be um, selected if uh, by um, uh, uh, build system rules and cabled or um, also dependencies as declared in the configuration system, kconf, can also influence the presence or absence of uh, specific blocks. Linux developers really expect you to obey these uh, configuration option rules. So if you look in the kernel patch submission checklist, then you see a bunch of requirements or suggestions that um, kernel developers are recommended to follow. And I would like to highlight this point, point number eight. Uh, you are expected to have carefully reviewed um, the code with respect to relevant configuration options. And the submission guidelines even admit that this is very hard to get right with testing. Brain power pays off here. This is a literal uh, quote. Um, the approach that I'm presenting today um, replaces this brain power by tools because we believe testing this should be as easy as you apply the patch. This can be done with, um, either with a uh, tool Git or with your editor or whatever. And we believe that it should be as easy as calling Vampire with the desired tool of your choice. In this case, it's just GCC, just a test compilation, and you specify the, uh, the, uh, the number of uh, files that you want to uh, analyze. In our paper, we um, claim three contribution, which is also the outline of this talk. First, we give a thorough analysis and quantification of variation points that are uh, missed by the state-of-the-art tools. Second, uh, I present an approach and implementation to maximize the configuration coverage of existing tools for static analysis in existing build systems. Our evaluation shows that using this approach, we can show a significant increase of revealed issues using GCC, um, and 91 of which we can uh, have been able to verify a serious bugs.
But before I get to the details of our approach, let's take a step back and have a look at the bigger picture. The issue is that source code in, is inevitably error prone. And especially in the systems community, we um, are, um, have a uh, history of employing tools for static analysis because they have the very nice property that you can find bugs without having to run the code. This is, f especially for system tools, very important because often you don't have the necessary hardware or um, available to test it. The issue with these static tools is that in order to do full type checking, this is a very important technique for finding many of the uh, of state of the art um, um, uh, bugs. Um, they require the pre-processed source code. And because of this requirement that they need to rec um, uh, analyze pre-processed source code, they require a specific configuration to be analyzed. Otherwise, the, uh, well, the, the, yeah. Um, when we look into papers that propose tools for static analysis, then many times we do not really see what configuration they've been using, but um, we are pretty sure, or most of them indicate that they have been using only a single configuration. For the sake of this uh, presentation, let's assume that they have been using the all yes config de uh, default configuration, which is supposed to enable all available configuration objects in, li uh, configuration options in Linux. Um, we m this, however, turns out to be insufficient because um, we have conducted an analysis that shows the configuration coverage. The configuration coverage is the percentage of code that is covered by a given set of configurations. And if we analyze the all yes config configuration coverage for Linux, then we see that it, first of all, it depends on the user architecture. And we see that it is in the range of uh, uh, 50 to 65 percent. On ARM, it's, we're talking about 60 percent. On uh, x86, we're talking about 65 percent. And on MIPS, on 55 per, um, uh, percent configuration coverage. The remaining code remains unseen by, the com by your static uh, analysis tool. This means that bugs are easily missed. So it's pretty clear to us that you really need to uh, get uh, to analyze more than one configuration. The question is which configuration uh, are really relevant for your problem because you cannot test all configuration. So the way how Vampire works is it uh, generates a set of configuration based on the um, variability model inside of Linux. The variability is constructed, is, uh, is, um, is affected by, first of all, by the configuration constraints as um, given by the kconfig configuration tool, um, by the make files, and by the ifdiv blocks. And Vampire uses existing variability extractors to establish a propositional formula phi to uh, uh, for, for each source file. And using this formula, it, um, Vampire uses a clever algorithm that gives you a set of configuration, and configuration for each source file that when scanned subsequently will maximize the configuration coverage. The result are loadable configurations that you, uh, that you can load and process with kconfig, the configuration tool of Linux, and then apply the static uh, checker of your choice. We have implemented backends for GCC, Sparse, Clang, Coxinel, um, but ex extending that to any tool that behaves somewhat like um, GCC is easy. The nice thing about this approach is that the configuration that you uh, get as output of Vampire are ready to use test cases. So if you submit a patch to an upstream kernel maintainer, you only have to provide them the configuration that uh, you have been using, and he does not need uh, all these configuration uh, variability extractors or the whole uh, toolchain. So you really get um, ready to use test cases output. We have evaluated this, um, uh, this approach on all 24 architectures in Linux 3.2. And as static checker, we have been using GCC 4.7. Um, this is an up uh, an, a version of GCC that is newer than um, was available at uh, Linux version 3.2 in order to, because um, GCC, in new, every new version of GCC, uh, you get better diagnostics, meaning um, compiler warnings and errors. During our experiments, we found out that on average, Vampire causes uh, compiles every file about 1.2 times. This corresponds to an uh, overhead in terms of compiler calls of about 20%. Uh, 
This overhead means that uh, for the incremental analysis of an individual file, which is the common case if you are a driver developer, then you usually only um, touch a, um, a small set of files. The overhead there, uh, the runtime there is about one minute, including uh, the compilation. If um, you want to analyze a, f a full architecture, then uh, the calculation of all configuration for our architecture here, uh, x86, takes about four minutes. If you want to analyze the full architecture, then this can be done in about two hours. This includes the compilation and um, uh, actually activating of all configuration uh, options. And actually the majority of time is not spent in Vampire, but it's spent in the build system files and cabled in kconfig. These parts just haven't been optimized for this use case. The result of our evaluation is that we can observe a significant increase of um, compiler warnings and errors. For Linux ARM, we are observing 64% more compiler diagnostic for x86, we are seeing 15%, and on MIPS, we are seeing 58%. Uh, 58%. In the paper, we describe um, and explain um, why this number is so different across various architecture. We have furthermore um, taken a closer look at what kinds of errors um, uh, uh, do we see with this approach. Um, during this analysis, we found out that uh, most of the diagnostics are probably false positives, and we skipped that. However, from uh, the remaining 91 um, seri um, um, uh, messages, we uh, validated them. We believe that these are uh, really uh, serious bugs that um, kernel developers should look at. And Generally, we, we are seeing uh, undeclared types and identifiers in code, uh, a significant increase uh, access to possibly uninstallized data, uh, even format string warnings and a buffer overflow. In total, you see here the, the increase of a compiler diagnostic compared if you only scan all yes config to um, all configurations that are calculated by Vampire. Um, out of these 60 additional um, uh, bugs that we have found, we have uh, pre uh, uh, prepared patches for seven of them. We have submitted them to the upstream uh, maintainers and they have happily and thankfully uh, acknowledged them. I would like to show you an example about what, is, uh, what are the typical uh, bugs that we found with uh, Vampire. Here we are looking at um, part of the um, hardware abstraction layer of, of Linux ARM and in, more specifically in the BCM ring machine architecture of ARM. In core.c we're seeing a file that sets, that defines uh, the, uh, the various timer frequency here, the timer three frequency, uh, as specified in kilohertz. Um, uh, the important point, um, the interesting point here is that for one specific derivative of uh, this BCM ring microarchitecture, namely FPGA 11107, we see that for some reason we need to multiply this frequency by a factor of 30, but only on this derivative. When we then look into uh, the actual timer um, inst um, instantiation, then we see that for the time implementation we need to specify the rate in hertz as opposed to in kilohertz. Because we have to multiply here with a factor of 1,000, this is prone to an, uh, to an overflow. And in fact, GCC will report you this overflow if you happen to use a configuration that enables this particular kconfig option. This means this is a, uh, a subtle uh, configuration-dependent bug that is very easy to overlook if you do not um, uh, follow the kernel guidelines and test your code with all relevant configuration options. I would like to summarize and conclude. The Linux configuration and build system imposes significant challenges for today's tools for static analysis. By extracting the variability of IFTF blocks, kconfig and cabled, Vampire can calculate configurations that maximize the configuration coverage at an acceptable cost in a way that is usable for day-to-day -day operations. The Vampire approach reveals hundreds of bugs that, are GC that GCC does not show in the default configuration all yes config. I would like to point out that the tool is freely available and we have even ported that to other configurable system software including 
BusyBox L4 Fiasco. This is our website. I thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer questions. How long does it take to run the tool? For us, the, the whole process um, takes um, on an individual file about one minute to run. Um, if you want to calculate the full architecture as we have done in our experiments, then we're talking about two hours. And we can further optimize like now by checking only for the options related to a single architecture and cut this time down, right? I mean, if I'm yes, only I, I, that, the majority of the time is actually spent with activating this uh, configuration options. Um, so the, the tool itself is, is actually pretty fast, but the, uh, it exploits the underlying mechanisms of the build system to activate this configuration, and this is not really optimized. So this needs to be, uh, this would need uh, to be optimized in the Linux configuration build system. One more question. I was curious. Uh, how stable is the Linux configuration framework? For example, do you have to patch uh, Vampire every time Linux comes out with a new release, or has it been pretty stable in that regard? That's a that's a very good question. So, um, thankfully, Vampire itself does not need to be uh, um, uh, patched that often for the because the, robot, uh, the 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 approach itself is uh, rather stable. What, however, is pretty fragile and I think that is what you're getting at, is uh, the variability extractors from the uh, configuration system from kconfig and from kboot. And these are indeed rather fragile. It would help our approach and many other analysis tremendously if they uh, would uh, provide these extractors themselves. Currently we're using uh, reverse engineered tools that uh, approximate the actual variability model and this is also the reason uh, why if we could improve uh, these extractions, this would also tremendously improve our um, uh, tool uh, and the results much further. <laughs>